Okay, this is coming from Pompano Beach, Florida. That's how I'm spending my vacation on <laughs> making videos for my biology kids. Uh, this is going to be on the cell cycle. This is going to be 6 1, um, which is going to deal with cell size and things. But the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about uh, this particular picture. Um, this is going through the phase of mitosis, talking about centrioles and asters and nuclei and cell membrane. And then we finally go through, and that's not what's supposed to happen yet. And when we finally go through, come on, give me the um, back to here where we actually start getting the um, chromosomes to appear. Um, you can see it's chromatin, and then it forms, forms into chromosomes that are where they condense. This was a human, and you can see down here this is actually an, em an embryo of a marine worm. But if this was a human, there'd be 23 pair of chromosomes in each one of these so that we can go through. And I have no idea what's going on with this mouse. Um, this is my netbook, and it actually thinks I'm trying to scroll, which I'm not all the time. I wish I had my uh, board. But anyway, they in metaphase, the chromosomes all line up. Um, the asters, some of them turn into what are called spindle fibers. These are parts of the cytoskeleton, which we talked about in Unit 3. We talked about um, the, fate, the uh, actual parts of a cell. But these are part of the microtubules and microfibers that actually make up the cytoskeleton. But anyway, the chromosomes line up. The centrioles send out asters, which come into spindle fibers, which grab, on, grab onto the centromeres of the chromosomes. And then they start pulling them apart, so we get 23 chromosomes going this way and 23 chromosomes this way from the 23 pair that we had all the way back here at the chromatin. And then we actually break the two cells into four cells. And this is how we actually go through the dog racer part where we go through uh, not the reproduction R, but the repair and the um, replacement if we're growing um, or we're actually replacing cells that are there. Okay, why do cells divide? Why do cells actually go from one cell to two? And down here, there's actually a, a demonstration of what's going on. And if you take a look at it, we have um, one milliliter, one millimeter by one millimeter. So we actually have six millimeters of surface area. We have one millimeter, one times one times one, one millimeter cubed of volume. And if we do the ratio of surface area to volume, we have a six to one ratio, which is a six. That allows us to have a whole lot of doors for material to go in and out of the cell, as well as a smaller cell for the nucleus to send messages to the different cell organelles that are in there. If we had a 2 by 2 by 2, we actually have 24 millimeters squared for surface area. Um, 2 by 2 gives you 4 on each side. 6 times 4 is 24 square millimeters. Volume 2 by 2 by 2, 8. And if we do the volume there, we have a surface ratio to volume ratio of 3. Um, fewer number of doors to get things in and out. And we have more space for the nucleus to send mes messages out. So let's take a look at the two reasons why we do uh, cell division. One of them is DNA or overload. The nucleus, the boss of the cell, can't get messages out to the organelles fast enough. So if the nucleus wants to send something to the endoplasmic reticulum, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, to actually make a protein so that we can send it either inside the cell or outside the cell, um, what it wants to do is it sends out a biological message to that endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum makes the protein, sends a message back to the nucleus saying, yes, I got your message. And then it sends it off to the Golgi body, which sends a message back to the endoplasmic reticulum saying, yes, I got your package, and sends it off to some other cell, some other place in the body. And here we actually have the same thing. Um, the material's not there, but we get 4 by 4 by 16. And then we do 16 times 6. That's 60, 96 you know, millimeters squared. And then we actually have 4 by 4 by 4. Uh, 16 by 4, 40, 64, and then we actually find out that as we go from a, a small cell to a large cell, our surface area volume ratio decreases, and cells want to have the largest one. Second reason is material exchange. Think of like doors in the cell. The more doors we have, um, which we actually have more doors than this one, but the more doors we have per surface volume, so we have 6 to 1, that's much better than actually 24 to 8. So this is a much better cell size. So DNA overload, can't get messages out fast enough. Material exchange, can't get materials in and out of the cell fast enough. And let's do a little bit of math. 
Um, this is an older PowerPoint, doesn't have the math filled in, but we'll see if we can figure this out. Um, let me grab a pen, and I don't think they're here, so this poor little netbook with one gig of memory doesn't like to do things any too quickly. But if we have a one by one by one, each door here is one cubic, excuse me, square centimeter. Let's say these are going to be in millimeters. I'm doing again this with my mouse and not my touchpad, so writing is not going to be as easy. So each one of these is one, and we have six of those, so we actually have six. Let me see if the information is actually there. Oh, it is. Okay, 6x squared. Then we do volume by one by one by one, and we end up with one cubic x. If these are millimeters, this would be millimeters cubed. This would be millimeters squared, and our ratio is 6. Then we take this one, which is 6 by 6 by 6, and we take our volume. 6 by 6 is 36 times 6, and we end up with... Let me get rid of this pen. <clears throat> We're going to end up with 216x squared and volume 6 by 6 by 6, 216x, or in this case millimeters cubed, and our surface ratio is 1. The um, larger the surface ratio, the better the cell. And the last one, 10 by 10 by 10, surface area would be 600x squared, millimeters squared, volume would be 1,000 millimeters squared, and our ratio would be 0.6. So this is a much better cell size. Smaller you get, the more doors you get. Smaller you get, the more uh, surface area to volume ratio you get. Um, the less space we actually have to worry about for the DNA to send materials and also carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, and lipids to get into the cell to where they actually need to go. Remember, prokaryotic cells are small, um, 1 to 10 micrometers. Eukaryotic cells, the largest prokaryotic cell is the same size as the smallest eukaryote, and the smallest one to the largest one here could be somewhere between 10 and 100 times larger for eukaryotic cells. They've got to be larger because they actually have organelles to do that uh, work for them. Uh, this one, uh, I might as well show you this. I don't know how long it's going to take to open up this website. I've got two websites that I want to show you in this part, and this is a shockwave file. So it's saying that there is a little bit of a warning. So as it opens up, um, what this is going to do is it's going to talk about uh, cell size. And we're going to start off with uh, cells, and we're going to go all the way down to a carbon atom. And we're going to see the difference in size. And as again, I told you this netbook is being stressed with um, all the software that I'm running, uh, capture software, uh, conversion software, as well as this PowerPoint, and some other things in the background I think I have. Google open in there too. Okay, Chrome's opening up. I only have one Chrome. I shut them down, otherwise I probably wouldn't be able to get this stuff. Now I don't know how well this is going to show up because I'm only showing about 70% of the screen for the uh, presentation. Oh, uh, come on, you can open up. I'm in a um, Wyndham resort in Pompano Beach called Sea Gardens and I'm using their internet it looks like we're gonna get most of this so if you take a look at this what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide this little thing up here and we're gonna actually talk about um, you can watch this screen over here this is gonna show you magnification we're gonna talk about things that you can see with your eyes coffee beans grain of rice down to a sesame seed and then we've got some other things down here which we can't see and they're also showing you times uh, New Roman um, 12 point font is this size and as we scroll in we see that one this box is changing so now we're going to start seeing some definition in this small one millimeter box box you can see we're going to start talking about a grain of salt down here so we're going to zoom in a little farther I'll go into a grain of salt and show you that this box is now almost the same size as the original box in here and now you can start seeing the next um, and we look at these, these are 10 by 10, the next time we multiply by 100. So we're now about 100 times smaller than we were. The coffee bean you can see right there. Um, the grain of rice up there. Um, but we're going to take a look at this grain of salt. You can see it's a half a millimeter. And it is really cubic in size. And if you get into earth science, we'll talk about how this cleaves. 
and it has to do with the sodium and chlorine ions that are there. Now you can see an amoeba, and I showed my kids an amoeba. I'm actually ingesting two paramecium. So in, uh, we have a eukaryotic cell here and a eukaryotic cell there, a much larger one. This one moves by pushing its cytosol or cytoplasm out through the cell membrane and can wrap around and actually ingest things. And there's a human egg, a female gamete. Going a little farther, and now you can start seeing we're going down into, oh, whoosh, did you see that, how fast that went? Um, we're going into the next phase of magnification. There's the human egg, there's the, the female gamete, there's the male gamete, the human sperm, there's the skin cell. See the egg's even bigger than a skin cell. Here's a photoreceptor rod, which would be inside of your eye. And then we scroll in some more, and we get a red blood cell, um, baker's yeast, X chromosome, which we're going to see split up in 6B. And then we actually have some other things that are in here, which we can't really see all that well. But if we zoom in a little bit farther, we can see an E. coli bacterium, a lysosome, a mitochondria, and then we can see there's a measles virus, HIV virus, uh, virus, bacteria, um, and a phage. Um, and this actually will actually go against bacteria and actually give them viral infections. There is there is an influenza virus. Here's a hepatitis hepatitis virus. There's a coated vesicle which are in cells. Scroll on a little more. We can see a rhinovirus for a cold. You can see a ribosome, which actually makes protein with a large part in the member and a small member. There's an antibody. And this would just let me scroll when I want to. Um, hemoglobin protein, making your blood red for that blood cell that was way back when. There's a transfer RNA, which is going to actually bring in amino acids to the ribosome um, right there to make proteins. Um, you can see a phospholipid coming into the view. Phospholipids. Let me see if I can go back a little farther. Phospholipids come together to make cell membranes. There's a glucose, C6H12O6, methionine, nadinine, um, which are two amino acids for proteins. There's a water molecule, which we can see when we get a little closer. And then there's finally a carbon atom. So picometers, that's a billionth of a meter. 360 billionths. Now if you pay attention to this box up here as I scroll back through, you can see how many times we've magnified, if I can do this, without getting too far off here. And you can see that box is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger as we're seeing the boxes that we were in get smaller and smaller and smaller and goes all the way down to the beginning. Okay, let's go back into here. Let's go into the next slide. Growth and repair. Why do cells, why do bodies or, or need new cells? Um, first thing is for repairing. If you get a cut down to the living parts of the cell, these will actually regenerate. And where I have the 6A1 um, fill in material. Um, to make new cells on skin, which we replace about once every two, three days. Um, new cells in your stomach or your esophagus, which we replace every two or three days. Um, to make new stomach, new intestine cells. Um, for growth, where we get plants growing, or we get bacteria regenerating with the... Huh, should have seen a slide on. Uh, maybe it's on the next slide. Or the bacteria will actually make its... Um, looped DNA, copy it, move it over, pinches, and becomes two new cells. Okay, and this one I actually put up there because I think the kids like to see this. The development of a fertilized egg in a newborn human child requires it requires average of 41 rounds of mitosis. So we actually go from one cell to two cells and then to four cells and eight cells and 16. Do that 41 times and we end up with 2.2 times 10 to the 12th. Lots of cells, and then they all differentiate into the different organs. Um, last thing we're going to talk about is 
um, prokaryotic cell division, binary fission, where one cell becomes two. You can see the loop DNA actually becomes two, and they actually diff they give them different colors. They also have ribosomes in there to make proteins. Um, they move off to different they move off to different cells. They pinch off, and they become two different cells. The ribosomes having their own, or excuse me, the um, I'm sorry, the ribosomes having their own DNA can actually go over through their whole you know, their whole idea of mitosis. I think those were prokaryotic cells at some point. Um, but they're going to be moving in there and scratch that prokaryote, those are mitochondria. But they actually can reproduce, and so we actually end up with two cells that aren't quite as big, and they'll go through growth. Here we go from the same object, and you can see the stop there. This is where I'm going to stop with 6A1. So the DNA replicates, and you can start saying that uh, we'll actually get precursors going through there, and they'll actually make two copies of DNA. It'll start pinching. DNA will move to both sides, new cell walls, new cell membranes, new cells. And that's it. So I'm going to call it quits there. I'm going to end the video, which for five slides, I do not want to keep any of that stuff. Um, for five slides, that was a long presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Okay, I'm done.